this is another question about the the, the jihad. The vast majority of jihad in the world is carried out by the, by the Wahhabi movement people. What does this say about the traditional Sufi movement, particularly when jihad is to continue until the end of time? This is uh, questionable. It's, it's, uh, it's, where is your information from? Maybe from the Wahhabis that talk here in Britain. But in reality, these uh, the Afghanis, if you look at their their jihad, it was by no means Wahhabi groups that were all that were engaging in the jihad. Just, uh, look at Shamil Dagestani, the Naqshbandi Murshid, who fought the Russians for 35 years. Look at uh, Usman Dan Fodio, who established the Islamic State. He was a Qadri Sheikh. Also. Look at uh, Abdul Qadir al Jazairi, who fought the French. Although he lost, he fought the French. And he was a, he was a sheikh also of the Tariqa. The Darqawa in Morocco fought also. So the, the sheikh al Hashimi had, if you, uh, there's a picture of him uh, standing with his rifle. And then he had all of these for Palestine. He had all of the, the dervishes trained for with uh, with uh, martial or with uh, arms training. So it's not uh, yeah, it's not it's not true that the, the vast majority of jihad in the world is uh, carried out by the Wahhabi movement people. We could say the and jihad is not the only fard kifaya that needs to be done or fard ayn that needs to be done there's also teaching Islamic knowledge so if we ask who's teaching the Islamic knowledge we say that the only the traditional scholars are teaching it what the if Wahhabis are teaching is not ta'lim it's tajheel it's making people most more ignorant and so, who's to, you know, who are doing the other folk defiers, you know? You know. And in, re- in reference, I've already uh, said some words about the, the jihad are considering blowing up civilians as uh, as jihad. This is jihad against the Muslims. These Wahhabi groups, uh, you know, that, that are, for example, if we grant the, the uh, that they were the ones that brought down the trade center, and if not, there are others that also have uh, that have also committed terrorist acts. People that are killing civilians. And enraging the West against them and causing innocent people to be slaughtered left, right, and centered. What kind of jihad is this? Their jihad, because it is jihad without any knowledge, is jihad against Muslims and against Islam. It's stirring up the Americans against the Afghanis. I mean, what kind of jihad is this? Well, we got rid of our, alhamdulillah, we got rid of a thousand secretaries and fifteen hundred janitors and a thousand policemen. You know, New York, no, no, New York City no longer has to pay them. Alhamdulillah, you know, we really mowed them down. But then the whole country got trashed in Afghanistan. This is what I mean by no baraka. Knowledge or practice without any knowledge does not have any baraka in it. And anybody who's uh, anybody who thinks that uh, civilians can be killed is an ignorant person. Anyone who thinks that civilians can be killed in jihad and that this is jihad or that bombings and, and, and terrorist bombings are jihad is an ignorant person. Their excuse, a fatwa made by a Wahhabi somewhere in the Qasim, somewhere in Saudi Arabia, is well, anybody who's paying taxes, even if they're Muslim, is helping the kuffar, and so he's an enemy. Well, I don't know how things work in Saudi Arabia, but where I come from, I don't know anybody who puts their money in an envelope and sends it to the government out of pure love for what they're doing. (laughs) 
what I know is that they haul a person away to jail if he doesn't pay his taxes. I mean, who's, who, what person in their right mind is going to send their money to the government if the government isn't coming and taking it away from them? I mean, so where's the, you know, where's the logic? Where's the logic? Well, oh boy, you know, we got in, in uh, Dar es Salaam, we blew up 300, and, in, in, you know, in this place we blew up 800. What? In the streets of Cairo, we set off a bomb in front of the American embassy, and we blew up a whole stack of Egyptians. Well, they were standing in front of it, after all. I mean, this logic, this is, uh, the, is this jihad? What the Anyway, in general, people who have good intentions, they have to have knowledge. This is what I'm telling you about answering all of these questions. If there is not knowledge, then there cannot be practice. And uh, jihad, uh, I've written something about this, this uh, called Making the World Safe for Terrorism. This article that's on Masood's webpage, and I wrote it in September. However, it's still, I think it's, I still stand by it. I haven't changed in many of my ideas. I have a whole bunch of hadiths about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I've assembled. I didn't have a chance to re uh, read them to you. Anybody doubts what I'm saying about the nature of jihad? Well, any jihad is better than none, even if it's not jihad after all. I don't go with that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he forbid killing women and children. And uh, Omar ibn Khattab, who is certainly not a wimp by anybody's <laughs> by anybody's standards, he ordered the troops when they went out to jihad. He ordered them not to kill non-combatants. <laughs> they understood Islam better than we do. And so the the perception of the leaders of the quote jihad movements that they cannot face a standing army in the field or they cannot face the weapons that America has with the with fields, and so they can only hit soft targets, i.e., you know, hit the wimpies in Cairo, or hit this, or whatever it may be, because they're easier, you know, they, they can't kill the people that they should kill, and so they kill others in place of them. This is not jihad, and this is not anything. It's typical of ignorance. Ignorance doesn't bring about anything good. It's a blight. The, the united minds will never produce anything good. And the Wahhabis are be, their minds are benighted. You know. And people don't remember who it was that fought the jihad in Afghanistan. It was the Afghanis. And the Afghanis were not Wahhabis. They had the sharpest distaste for these, uh, for many of the Arab factions that went there and, and uh, wanted to fight also because of their Wahhabis. Wahhabism was against the law during the 1980s in Afghanistan. You know. So anyway, get your facts straight, and then to come back and re-ask the question. Ask it from yourself. <laughs>